Hi, my name is Rick and I'm from Ukraine. The video you're about to see is a conversation with a Russian soldier in Ukrainian captivity made by Ukrainian journalists Volodymyr Zolkin and Dmitro Karpenko. I wish to make this content available to more people around the world. This is why I'm dubbing it into English. It's not much, but it's honest work. All rights belong to Zolkin, Karpenko and their team. Please enjoy. Will you call home? A bit later, I'm gonna get myself together first. A bit later, when? Can I do it right now? We're gonna do it during the talk, I just need your number to make a call. Got it, got it. It's just the number that I will give you. My mother has a button phone. And what will change a bit later? I'll finish smoking. You'll finish it, we're not recording yet. Ah, got it, got it. You won't be smoking. You will be calling... Of course I will. When I have a conversation, you'll tell us why you've come here, what you were doing here. Say the number. Plus seven, yes. Nine, three, seven. Do you remember the number with WhatsApp? My brother certainly doesn't have it. He doesn't do such things. They maybe have WhatsApp, but it's only the number of my mother's brother, but I don't remember his number by heart. All right, then we call your mother later. Yes, I worry though. Why? I haven't heard her voice for so long. I'm just such a kind of person. What kind? Emotional. But why? What is the emotion here? What can I say? It's very tough. Why? What is tough exactly? To hear my mother's voice. Are you ready? Yes. For what? For a conversation. Do you have something to tell? Hmm? Well, what can I tell you? I lived, did not bother anyone. They brought me the summons. I was making plans. What plans? Before mobilization, I was selling spruces. After selling them, I wanted to start working in forestry, wanted to go and sell spruces again. And then our valiant draft boards ruined everything. Damn them. Please introduce yourself. My name is Karyakin Mikhail Alexandrovich. Your date of birth? February 11th, year 1986. Town of birth? Hmm? What town? Samara region, Borskaya village. Borskaya. Do you give your voluntary consent for recording and publishing of this conversation? And why not? Some people don't want to. This is why it ends with this. I don't think anything bad can happen if you record this. Will you tell me some military secret? A military secret? Yes. Which one? I don't know any military secrets. They didn't tell you? They just tossed us like kittens. Who tossed you like kittens? Our commanders. When did you receive the summons? Both when we received summons and when we were brought to this Kriminoya, its name. Yes, probably. When was the summons handed over to you? It was handed over to me, I'll tell you. Yes, 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 it was, yes, it was on 25th, on 26th, I should have gone to the forestry, and on 28th, I was summoned. Where did they hand it over to you, at work? No, in Borskaya, they came to my home, 
They came to your home. Yes, I was lying on the couch having the rest. Then suddenly my father walks in and says, you have visitors. What time was it? It was closer to the evening, around 4 or 5 p.m. I just came back home. And who came to you? A woman from the draft board and police officer. And what were police needed for? They always take police with them. They're probably scared. I don't know about other places, but ours always have police with them. With those, what their name is, uh, Rosguardia. Rosguardia? Yes, we had the Obob before, and now we have Rosguardia. Everything changed everywhere. What did they tell you? They said, put your signature here to be conscripted. Well, and I asked them, what if I won't give you the signature? And they threatened me with a prison term. How much did they promise you? Ten years. Ten years. Yes, only later, after I signed, I found out. Only when these trainings began. Well, not even trainings. Just photo, that is. We were just making photos. They were just making photo reports that we were kind of doing something. And you weren't doing anything for real? We were doing nothing. And for whom you were making photos? Was the press there? Some journalists? Someone came, not journalists, but their own people. We went out, took some photos of how we shoot and stuff. But I was only shooting from an assault rifle. Were there many people gathered there? Well, somewhere around 300, I don't remember. Somewhere around that number. It's only from some other region. Well, of course they took much more people from all the regions. Where did you bring you to train from Samara? From Samara? First, we were in Roshinsky. It's a township in Samara region. We spent a week there, then one week in Taliati, then one week in Roshinsky again, then one week in Taliati again. Then from Taliati they took us to Roshinsky, and from Roshinsky they took us to Nizhnya Krynka. Maybe you know of such a township. I don't know. In Donetsk region. It's where Makivka is. Ah, I know where it is. So... We spent three weeks there in January. And somewhere closer to the end of January, they took us to Rostov region. Mm -hmm. We spent a week there, maybe two. Then from Rostov, they took us to Kursk region. There's a village Skovorodnevo there. So, we also spent about two weeks there. After these two weeks, they took us <coughs> somewhere near Voronezh. The township is called... How is it? Pagonovo. There's also a cantonment there made of tents. And after that, from that Pogonovo, they sent us, divided, allocated us again. And they took us to that Kriminna. When was it? When did you arrive? To Kriminna? Yes. I arrived, I'll tell you, on February 10th. 10th, well, so you were wandering around for a long time. Yes? October, November, yes? What was in Kriminna? In Kriminna, well, we spent two or three days there. First, they unloaded us. Yes. We waited the whole day for those who would take us. The ones from command. Yes, I get that. As a result, no one took us. Local guys took us into their dugouts. So we just didn't have to sleep outside. They sent you as reinforcements and no one took you under their command? 
They took us later. We slept there for two nights, on 10th and 11th, and on 11th we were taken by some... His call sign was Cadet. Colonel? I actually don't remember his rank. I just remember that he had a beard. But not me. No, no, not you. So... They took us to some house, so we could spend the night there. So, which one? A common private house? Yes, a common private house. Well, it seems there were all these conscripts in each house and all the other. Who allowed you to enter this house? Well, it was our senior. Yes, I understood you were told go and live there, but it was a civilian house. I understand, yet our superior took us there and showed the house. So why did you join in with the pillaging? Well, we weren't really pillaging, we just entered. You made use of another's property. Did you? Well, well, unwillingly, but yes, we did. What do you mean, unwillingly? You're a marauder, you've just admitted it. It turns out. Well, it turns out like this. It turns out. I've got infected with this ward of yours turns out. A military man can't make use of civilian property. You must have your own tents. Isn't it logical? Sure, it's logical. You must have your entire infrastructure deployed. Sure, sure. Not to roam around the private grounds and houses like homeless people. Indeed. So, what's next? What's next? Then, on Monday, this was 13th, by the way, 13th of February? Yes, February. I just remember that. And where were you during January? It slipped my mind. We've spent January in Nizhnya Krynka. Ah, got it. On 13th, we woke up at 5 a.m. Before 6 a.m. we were loaded to Ural and carried to positions. Right there, to a forest station placed us in trenches. So, two, three days we were living in those trenches, were on duty as well, at the third post, also in the same dugouts. Have you had enough food? Yes, but... We had canned meat and stuff, though I couldn't eat. Why? I could only think about one thing, my home. And when all those shells were flying over, I prayed to all gods not to let one hit our dugout. And too bad that it didn't. Or is it good? Well, I don't know. It depends. And did it hit anything else? I don't know. I didn't see. I was afraid to even stick my nose out of that dugout. Has everyone been hiding like this? Yes. Have you at least been shooting back? Not at all. Why would we shoot? Where to shoot? But you're the second army of the world. I personally did not shoot anywhere. And I didn't see anyone shooting. When it all started, after three days. It was Thursday, let me think. Yes, it was on 16th, exactly when there were artillery strikes in the morning again. And then the shelling began. The heavier one? No, it was already an automatic weapon shooting. Ah, already? Yes, they were already shooting us. Ah, our troops had already gotten closer to your trenches. Well, it seemed so. We could hear that someone was getting closer, so we started running. Where did you run? Into attack? No, to the trees. We began running back instead. So you left your positions? We ran out of our dugout and rushed towards the trees to take cover behind. I don't know. Why so? Why didn't you take to the fight? I don't know this. I just... I just got confused. How many of you were there, in that forest station? Honestly, I can't tell how many. At least approximately. Three people, ten people. Exactly in our dugout there were three people. 
and three of you started running. Yes, we also received the command from one guy. He was kind of senior there. He was a private. His call sign was, let me think, the Wild. So, the Wild gives a command. Attention, regroup backwards, fall back. No, he just said fall back. And we ran away. Without attention? Yes, without. And why didn't he follow the military regulation? I don't know why. I didn't have time to ask him why. So, you run away. Ran away. Started hiding behind some trees. And I started looking for some tree so as not to get shot. So... Then further and further we ran up to some trench. So... Then again all those shots, then some hit from that side, then something else. And... Already when Ukrainian soldiers ran up to us, they shouted surrender. So there was nothing to do and I threw my assault rifle behind me. That was it. What about the others? Well, and others who were with me, all were also captured, all three. Yes, all three. What is this war actually for? I don't need this war at all. What were you told? Why are you here? We were told that we kind of defend the lands. It was when we were still there. Oh, so tell what you were told. Why did you come here? Well, it's a... how to say... We were gathered after we arrived by train to Kursk. Region. We went out and we were told, you are on Kursk land and so on. Don't cover your mouth, because it will be hard to hear you. <laughs> so, we're here kind of for a defense of our land. Kind of not to let some Banderovci break in. And they also started talking about some mercenaries. Did you see at least one? I've never seen a single one. So what did it turn out to be? It turns out that we were just led by the nose. What a delicate and beautiful definition, led by the nose. So childish. Well, I can't use the foul language. You can. No. You can. We allow the foul language, as we have the YouTube channel. I forgot to mention this, by the way. So, we were fooled. Oh, okay. Just swear. Come on, use the foul word. But I don't like it. God forbid my relatives hear this. I just don't swear in front of my relatives. They're not here. Yes, but maybe I will bleep this. Anyway, you can say whatever you want. Okay, here's the Russian word. We were fucked over. Fucked over. What else did they say? Did they tell you'll be at the second or third front line? Ah, at the border. At the border, yes. We were told we'll be at the border. Just kind of a vehicle inspection. This is exactly what they told us. And what's again? <laughs> they fucked you over again. As always. Where else? Were you led by the nose? Where else? I don't give a fuck. It's even hard to remember where. It's easier to remember where you were not. Yes, we were led by the nose everywhere. Since our conscription... Why so? I don't know. Just think about it. Your thoughts on why is it like this in your country? You know, I'm not deep diving into politics. This is not for me. Do you know that you're not getting imprisoned for 10 years? That this is there from this moment that you were... I was fucked over. Yes. I already realized it later when... That I'm a fool. I would rather pay 500 or 3000 rubles fine. And fuck this all. 
And now I only pray about one thing, that will get exchanged. And I can go home. And you'll go here for the second time. Second time? Are you kidding? I have not fallen down from a bed and hit my head so far. <laughs> no, no, Dmitry, no. It is out of the question. I don't know about others, I can't say for others, but I can say for myself that it won't happen again. No way. Do you promise? I swear, so I won't see you a second time. You won't, unless you come to visit. They are surely waiting for me and want to see me as a guest. Me and Vova, this is my friend, we made this channel together. Where? We're welcome guests there, in your Russia. They'll lock us up for about 500 years. What we are doing is really bad. Could you, by the way, tell us why what we're doing is so bad? But what bad are you doing? Let's think about it. What we're doing that's so bad? According to all your idiots from FSB. KGB, ШМЕДЖИБ, НОТ КГБ. Nothing even springs to mind. What if we think about it considering what you told me? Is it the truth that needs to be sent there? You mean this truth? Yes, this one. Do you think their propagandists want to hear this truth? This I don't know. What do you think? That from the very summons and to being taken prisoner, they led you by the nose. Everything was not as they told you. And in captivity, they should have cut off your arms and legs. Right? Yes. What did they tell you about captivity? Well, they didn't say anything about arms and legs, but they did mention some other parts that they can cut off. Are we going to check? No need to. Did they cut it off? You don't want to show it? No, everything seems to be in place. We won't check, because YouTube definitely won't allow it. Yes, yes, yes. So it turns out you were deceived in this too? Yes. How is it to live in a country where you're deceived about everything? At a legislative level, at all levels. At a legislative level, at all levels, they deceived you. With the propaganda in your heads, you were deceived that there are some Bandera supporters here who kill Russian speakers. What language does everyone speak to you in? In Russian. So how is that you were told that everything was not like that? Can we say that you all live in some kind of parallel reality? Where reality doesn't match what's really going on. Dmitry, I don't really understand most of these words in these questions. And honestly, I don't even know how to answer this. I just don't stick my nose into politics. That's it, you all don't stick your nose into politics. But politics crawled for you, took you away and tossed you like a meat. I'm just a simple working guy, as they say. Honestly, I wake up in the morning and that's it, I go to work. I work either in the forest or dig metal with my friend or drive a taxi. I'm not really interested in that stuff, but this stuff became interested in your body. That's right. And because you weren't interested, they decided to handle things differently that you're needed elsewhere, in a different form. It turns out so. It turns out so. Should we call Putin? I don't even want to see him, let alone hear him. Why so? You voted for him. I didn't vote for him. Then who did you vote for? I can't remember the last time I voted. But that's shitty. Because they voted for you. Whom? Should we call Shoigu? The main deer breeder. I mean, the minister of attack. Why the hell do I need to talk to him? 
Нечего сказать? You have nothing to say? Мне просто интересно... I'm just curious, why you are all afraid to call any of your superiors? You're scared, yeah, because you're afraid of what will happen to you when you come back, right? Hello? Hello, yes. Hello? Hello, good day. Is it her? Good afternoon. So, do you give your consent for recording and publishing? No, I do not consent. Have a good day. Comment on this. What? Comment on this. What do you mean? Why did she refuse to talk to you? Well, my mother has a temper. What does that mean? Am I doing something wrong? I... It's just a YouTube policy that says everyone who talks has to voluntarily agree that they will be recorded. Does this give you anything, or what? To us? Well, in general. Her agreement? Yes, yes, yes. So that she can't later complain about our video with the phrase I didn't give my consent to be recorded. Call her again. Why? Well, what will change? Will we have to bag her? Well, it's not hard for me to call her again. Let's think. Have a smoke. Will you smoke? I understand it happened unexpectedly. Yes. She won't be able to call us back. Hmm? She won't be able to... I know. Call back. Well, she's just that kind of person. She heard your voice, you know this. Well, she heard it, yes. What will happen if we call her again? I cannot allow you to speak without her consent. Well, explain it to her. Tell me what to say to her to make her agree. Well, she's your mother. And will this affect me being exchanged sooner? She didn't know that you were in captivity. Well, that's right, she didn't know. This call aloud will allow her to go to some draft board tomorrow and demand that you be taken back home. So explain it to her. Why do I need this? She already heard you, didn't she? She did. She knows that you're in captivity. She does. But she won't figure out that she needs to go to the draft board. And what bad are we doing with these recordings, these conversations? Why does this irritate your government so much? If you tell me what to say to her, I will try to call her one more time. No, oh, I don't even know what to say to her. What does she do? Her? Yes. She's an ordinary nurse in the surgery. There, in Samara region.
What's your name again? Михаил. She's calling FSB. No. She can either call my brother or me. Hello. So there's such a story. Here's your whole country. A mother doesn't want to talk to her son. Is that normal? If this may comfort you, this is not the first mother who refused to talk to her son. There are also wives who refuse. She will watch this interview anyway. Someone will send her the link or someone will come to her and tell her that. They won't be able to send her the link because she has a simple phone. Someone will show it to her at work. As soon as it will be published, your fellow countrymen will see this interview and she will know about it in about an hour. This is how it works. I'll make the last attempt to call her. I'm sure that she can see that I'm calling her again. Hello. Your son asked me to call you again. I will ask you once more. And what's my son's name? Mikhail. His name is Mikhail. And what's his patronymic? Alexandrovich. Wait, you're still not here. Alexandrovich. When and when was he born? Hold on, look. Wait, when was he born and where exactly was he born? Look, I won't name all of this for you. Where was he born? He was born in Samara region. And who are you? What's your full name? My name is Dmitri. So what, Dmitri? So it happened that your son came to kill us and was taken into captivity. He came to kill you? Well, yeah. He came exactly to you? Exactly to my home. Where exactly? Right to my... He came exactly to your home, exactly to your apartment. No, he didn't get there. He was taken into captivity before that. Look, I don't have time to speak to you. Wait, where was that? What locality? Locality? Ukrainian land, my homeland. Look, what is her name? Galina Alexandrovna. Galina Alexandrovna, I'll ask you one question again. Go on. If you want to talk to your son, I need your permission for the recording and publishing of you and your son's conversation. If you don't want to... No, I don't give you my permission. Fine. Did I do everything I could? For the first time, in all half a thousand conversations, I was kind of begging. What is happening there? She can hear you. She's that kind of person. She started interrogating me for some reason. Say your full name. Well, it is her. Well, then she does not correspond to her social status. Being a nurse, lecturing someone. In fact, we have a humanitarian mission. We give occupiers like you who came to kill our people the opportunity to talk with your relatives. But your relatives don't want to talk to you. That's it. We won't make more attempts. Non-standard interview we had. A conversation. It's not even an interview. Write down a comment with your thoughts about this topic. Do you have something to add? What can I add? You see, I did all I could. Maybe you have something against me? No, there are no claims against you. I've spent 10 hryvnas on calls. My mother just has a temper and... Why do you think that someone has to tell, prove or explain anything to you? All of you Russians.
I'm not, I don't, you don't, but your mother obviously does. Well, she is that type of person. So she is such a person, will be without a conversation with her son, who is no one knows where or what happened to him. If he is alive or not alive, well, you are alive. She'll be walking around proudly telling people, I put that journalist at his place. Will it be so? No, she's not. About this I can give you my word. I can guarantee that she'll never. But I don't care. She can write what she thinks of me on the wall if she wants to. By tradition, our prisoners of war dress their own fellow countrymen if they consider it necessary or if they want to. I only want one thing, to get home faster. Everyone else, go and die. Our armed forces will help you with this. Thank you. This is your address. No? But you said only for yourself. This is the distinguishing feature of you Russians. You think only about yourself, one person. Just like she is thinking only about herself. You think only about yourself. People who want to do or change something say don't come here or take the warm socks because it's cold here. Something like that. Thank you. If you want to smoke, you can smoke one more cigarette. What the hell? What is happening? What kind of nonsense is this? Is it okay? Of course not. Dmitry, may I? I even got... What? May I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. How are these exchanges happening in general? <laughs> well, they are happening. But in your case, it won't be soon, I guess. Do you know why? Because your mother won't be tormenting those in prosecutor's offices, courts, draft boards, military units. She won't have time for it. If she doesn't have time or desire to talk to her son, whom she... When was the last time you talked to her? In January. In January? What, you didn't have any communication channels there on positions? She hasn't talked to her son since January. She hears your voice and says twice, I'm not gonna talk. What am I supposed to do? Well, she probably gonna call someone now and say that some dude called Dmitri. Can I talk to her myself? No. You can't. Are you upset? Who else do you have in your family? I remember my brother's number. Hmm? I remember my younger brother's number. Younger? How old is he? He's 29. Why didn't we call him right away if you knew your mom was like that? We can't call underage people. But he's 20... He's a history teacher. It would have been a cool conversation. Can we call him? Why didn't you give me his number right away? I just didn't think of it. Does he have WhatsApp or Viber, Telegram? Yeah, let me... So, WhatsApp, Viber... I don't think he likes that stuff. We can ask him now. Ask who? My brother. Plus 937. When was the last time you talked to him? Sometime at the end of January too.
Holy shit, she tried to bully me. How do you think this works? He doesn't have WhatsApp. If he doesn't have... Karekin, brother. Him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're making an additional record of the conversation. Maybe we can get in touch with his brother. Because something went wrong with his mom. I even got nervous. That hasn't happened for a long time. He hang up. Just call him by telephone and he'll answer. Your brother is in captivity. Will you talk? Well, I'm not going to play a call me again game. History teacher. School teacher? He erased all the messages. He doesn't want to talk to you. He blocked my number. Is it some kind of a joke? No, it's not. Wow, I've never seen anything like this before. He deleted all my messages and blocked my number. I can't even call him now. You hear the busy signal right away. Well, now I'm really curious. Do you have any other siblings? <coughs> I don't have any other phone numbers. Misha, what's happening? What kind of nonsense is this? I have one number, but it's written in my passport, and my passport was taken... I don't know where your passport is. Well, that's how our conversation went. Are you on good terms with them? Yes, of course we're on good terms. I see. So what do I do now? Well, think about what to do. May I take back the device? Sure, take it. Thanks. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and consider becoming the member of this channel. You can also support my work on Buy Me A Coffee. All of this will help me grow on my team and bring you these dubs much more often. See you next time. Slava Ukraini!